Okay, order of precedence. Now, what does that mean? There you go. Um, well, what it means is if you're looking at your feature control frame, you're going to see datums. And the order that they're given in does matter. This is different, for example, than this, even though I have the same letters. So they're different if they're ordered differently, and they're also different if I have different letters. And they're going to give different kinds of control. They're going to hold it in slightly different ways. But if you're like, well, the dating reference frame is going to be the same no matter what, yeah. Yes, those theoretical ones are going to make three perfect planes. However, in reality, how things are held, there's some ways that are easy to, easier to measure from, and it's just it's going to be based a lot on what you're trying to do. Okay, so let's talk about some flat datum features. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but if you have a flat primary datum feature, that would be our datum A, it's the very, very first one. You don't have to use A, I could use B as my first datum feature, but I'm just saying in this case it's A. Well, then a flat datum feature is located by the minimum of three highest points on that surface. Those three highest points are enough to make a plane. If you think about it, one point gives you a dot, two points give you a line, and three points, well, they can give you a plane. So that's where it's coming from. They need at least three points to make that plane. Now these point locations are unknown. I don't know, well, it's gonna be right here, obviously, and right there, and right there, obviously. No, you don't know where they're gonna be. You can't predict those because there's going to be random surface variations, which are what's going to cause those. Um, now, when we're simulating this data A, this game is, is a continuous feature over this broken gap right here. It has to be at least as large as the data feature because it's going to need to be stabilized on this full plane. And with this, three degrees of freedom have been constrained. You can't rotate that direction. You also can't rotate into the page. Um, and it can't move up and down anymore. All those things have been constrained. Remember, the whole 3, 2, 1 thing, it's coming back. So 3 for our first flat primary data feature. And here's a way that this might look. So here's the perfect, here's the imperfect. This flat plate right here is my datum feature simulator. And it's theoretically perfect, at least it got made of much higher quality than our part is. And my part is going to be sitting on the highest three points right there. One, two, and three. Those are the three points that are making contact. Those make our true geometric counterpart. Those are what we get our theoretical datum from. And then we connect those by laying them flat onto this surface right here. Okay, now we're down to our second datum feature, which goes in the second box, and this would be B in this case. Now it's going to establish a plane that's perpendicular to our primary plane. And just like the last one, it's going to be located by a minimum of two highest points on the surface. We don't know where those are, um, but what will it get rid of? It gets rid of one rotational and one translational degree of freedom. Translation degree of freedom is going to be the one that's not been previously constrained by my primary datum. So with this, I've constrained five degrees of freedom. There's only one more, and I'll be taken in by our third datum. But let's look at this a little bit more. So what might this look like? Well, once again, we have our part over here, but now we have two datums. We have our flat surface on the bottom, and we also have a flat perpendicular plate. It's perfectly perpendicular to this bottom plate. And our surface right there connects at two points because you need at least two points to hold it in place because it's getting rid of a rotational degree of freedom and it's getting rid of its ability to translate okay the two points are going to be necessary to keep it from rotating okay so with that we've gotten a little bit closer now to being able to com completely constrain our little workpiece so finally our third tertiary our tertiary datum plane it's going to get rid of that last translational degree of freedom and it takes one point um, it's going to be the minimum highest or sorry, the highest point and we don't know where that is just like in the previous equations and it's going to make our third perpendicular plane 
as you can see here's that third point of contact so with all of this we've now completely constrained it if you're saying well it can move that way yes yes it can but the point is that you would be you know pressing it up into this corner when it's being measured um, so there is a way to hold it steady in some cases you would be clamping it down but that is not the necessarily the norm Okay, so that's it for this time. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.